to Kalechi Egwim, an activist and executive director at Appeal Incorporated. He joins us now from the U.S. Thanks so much for joining us. There's so much that really seems to be wrong with this case. Uh, but tell us what really disturbs you the most about it. What disturbs me the most is that it took almost three months, two and a half months, um, to get any charges um, against these killers. Um, he was uh, killed, lynched on February uh, 23rd, and we're just now having charges. And, and if it wasn't for the fact that the, the cell phone video was released, these two killers would still be um, in their home, you know, on their porch, looking for who else to shoot on Ahmad's uh, 26th birthday. And it also disturbs me that the third man, the man who actually shot the footage, who was also with the uh, McMichael family chasing him down in his vehicle, he actually blocked off Ahmad um, on one side and stopped his vehicle and started videotaping while the father and son went to the other side. Um, that's William Bryan. He is still walking around with no charges. So that is all disturbing. Let's go back, though, quickly to the time scale. I mean, you say almost three months it took. Why? What is the DA saying? Well, the DA is saying a bunch of things that don't make any sense. Um, you know, uh, there was one, one uh, district attorney, um, one prosecutor who released a letter uh, talking about how um, Georgia law uh, did not show that the man committed any crimes. But, of course, that's nonsense. You know, no one has a right to, because you think someone may have committed a crime in the past, you see somebody who is unarmed jogging with some shorts and a T-shirt, and you just decide you're going to chase them down in your truck, ambush them, and shoot them dead. There is no law, you know, that, that there's no law that that could be inconsistent with. So the, the bottom line is that Gregory McMichael is a former police officer and was actually uh, uh, re recently retired from the district attorney's office as an investigator for them. So this is their person. Okay. That's why they let him stay around. And they basically, you know, and they, they've, they've even started to begin from the very beginning to try and prosecute not the killers, but Ahmad, and try to dig up all types of nonsense to try to make it seem like he was somebody who was unsavory when he is a victim of a vicious crime. Right. Uh, tell me, I mean, has this case, will this case uh, be turned into a political tool uh, of any sort? You know, we've already heard President Trump say he finds it disturbing and his heart goes out to his family, uh, the family of, uh, of Mr. Arbery. Is that, is that what you want to hear from leaders? Uh, well, I don't really, I'm not really interested, interested in what the, what, the, um, what the politicians say. They're going to use whatever tool that they see available um, to help them in, the, in their political aims. I'm interested in what, 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 the, uh, what the, um, the prosecutor and what the judge does, because we've seen this before. There should be no bail for these men. There should be no bail hearing um, where they're allowed to leave because these are dangerous men that shot an unarmed, innocent man who today will be celebrating his 26th birthday. So I, I don't want to see any bail. We need to see a, a fair jury selection. Uh, we need to make sure that these men are put, to, put in jail for the rest of their lives. And, and we need to make sure that William Bryan, who is a conspirator in this uh, lynching is also prosecuted. The, the okay. prosecutor, the, the political. Uh, before you, I wanted to get to one last, you know, point with you actually, because we had said that this whole case again raises the issue of racism in the U.S. justice system. Has the U.S. over the years, because there's been so much attention on discrimination, has it improved at all? Well, I would say no. Uh, uh, um, no, because you know. They still is in denial that there is a, um, a, a problem with their justice system. Um, you know, you really can't solve a problem until you until you recognize that there is a problem. You know, America still has not really atoned or even recognized its original sin of slavery and 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 the uh, and all the things, all the fruits that that bore from it. You know, which is 
it's, it's, it's a system that is responsible for the prosperity of America. America would not be the nation that it is now if it wasn't for the fact that it was built through 400 years of free labor. Um, so it, it can't quite turn its back on, on its gift because that, that, that is the reason why it is a country that it is um, in terms of prosperity. But it is also the reason why this, um, this problem persists. We've seen Freddie Gray. We've seen Trayvon Martin. We've seen Tatiana Jefferson. We've seen uh, uh, Tamir Rice. Even when the, 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 uh, the killers are prosecuted, they're, oh, they're found innocent because this justice system just does not respect the right of black people to live everyday regular lives, you know, whether they're jogging, whether they're in a park, whether they're they're in their own homes. It, you know, it, it seems to be no limit to where black okay. people, black men in particular, will be killed. Okay. Kalechi Egwin, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.